Longtime Nashvillians will remember this familiar face. Ruth Ann Leach was the first woman in Nashville to appear on the evening news back in the 1970s. Since then, this trailblazing journalist and philanthropist has led a fascinating life. She's now Ruth Ann Harnish, and she gets to spend her time managing a foundation that works to advance equality, particularly for women and girls. She's been named one of the 50 most powerful women in philanthropy, and she's back in Nashville for a big event. It's so great to have you here. Welcome home. Thank you. It is so great to be here in so many of my former co-workers and dear friends here still after all these years. It'll be 30 years next year that I've wow. been gone. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> Take us back to the 70s. What was TV like for women back then? Challenging. If you have ever seen Mad Men, then you have some idea what it might have been like around here. Mary Tyler Moore passed recently and her sitcom was a newsroom and there was the happy homemaker, Sue Ann Nivens. <laughs> they called me Sue Ann in the newsroom because oh my. my consumer feature, Dollars and Cents, reminded them of the happy homemaker. So I was Sue Ann as much as I was Ruth Ann in those days. Wow. <laughs> and you got to wear a wig as mandated by the well, general manager. They got to say how we looked. And I had very long counterculture hair, shall we say, <laughs> in those days. Uh, the Nashville Banner actually did a story on it. If you're in the library, you can see in the archives a picture of me with the very long hair. I used to go do a speech that involved me showing up looking like I looked in casual real life and then changing into the television person right oh, wow. before their eyes. I thought that was effective. It was and when it got put in the newspaper then I got to wear my real hair. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, one of the opens from an early newscast uh, back in the day with Chris and Hope and Ron. What do you remember about those great men? Well, one of the things I remember, which has to do with why I'm here today, is that all of us were always involved in projects that benefited the community that were not related to reading the news. Every one of those people would show up at events to MC or to judge a panel or to participate in some way in money raising. All of us raised money for the public television station together and those people actually worked on a construction crew. We got auctioned off to help you do something <laughs> and, and a school actually expected us to work as construction laborers on building their school I and we it. did it. Of course you did. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I remember about them because this work is never just about bringing you the news or telling you about the recipes. People in your local television news stations are part of your community. They help with the community solutions to community problems. And tomorrow, when I'm at the Power of the Purse luncheon for the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee's Women's Fund, I'm going to see a lot of women in Nashville who are devoting themselves to philanthropy benefiting women. You started this event uh, close to 20 years ago as part of your Hardish Foundation. Well, actually, there were probably 20 or so women who came up with and put this one on and I was just a new philanthropist at that time so my contributions were not enough to be credited with that but I have been a sponsor every year and 19 years and so there were a lot of us who came up with this idea and put on what was really the first big ticket fundraiser for women's philanthropy in Middle Tennessee. Why is it so important for you to focus on women and children in your good works that you do? Well, we just talked about when the world was a different place for women. And we're here for each other. As philanthropists, we are showing up to help each other become economically self-sufficient, to get vocational training, to get rescued from the kind of situations Vicki Yates was just telling us about on the news, to prevent and halt trafficking in this country. There are so many things that are happening that happen mainly to women and girls. So it's only right that philanthropy direct itself to solving those problems. It must be very rewarding for you. I know folks are going to be excited about seeing you at the Power of the Purse luncheon tomorrow. You're interviewing Glennon Doyle Melton, who is a best-selling author and uh, the creator of the Momastery blog. Fascinating woman. She is, and I am very much looking forward to that conversation and to seeing everyone there.
That'll be great. Well, I hope you'll come. Don't miss the Power of the Purse luncheon. It benefits the Women's Fund of the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. It's tomorrow at the Music City Center. There's a link on our website for tickets and more information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meryl. All right, well,